Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to actually sniff HTTPS traffic with BetaCab. There's a lot of misconceptions about how to do it and a lot of people don't understand how it actually works. Now even though I'm not an expert, I do believe that I can explain this to you. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is switch your BetaCab version. If I do BetaCab version, I can actually check my version. And my version is 2.23, which is not the latest version. The reason I downgraded the version is because it actually works. If you run HSTS hijack on the latest version, you will get the dial TCP error, which is a bit of a problem, and we don't want that. So we need to downgrade better cap. Don't worry, this is not hard to do. It's really simple. Let's cat into this file. So the first thing you need to do is download this zip file. This is basically just the zip of the executable of BetaCap, which you're going to place in the directory where your BetaCap is right now. So I'm guessing that right now we have the newest version installed. If you don't, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you installed it 2.23. So anyways, just download this zip right here and unzip it. Once you unzip it, you're going to run the command where is better cap uh, or which better cap. If I run which better cap, you will see that my better cap is in user and bin. And this is my installed version of better cap. So we want to switch this one because let's say that this one is the newest one. In my case, it isn't because I already replaced it with the 2.23, but let's pretend that it is. So what I would do is I would just basically take the one that I unzipped from here and I would remove the one that I currently have. So you sudo remove and then a user bin and this better cap. Make sure you type this correctly because you don't want to delete something else. So once you remove this better cap executable from the user bin, you're going to place the one that you unzipped into the user user bin basically to look like this again. So what we did is deleted the current version, which was the latest one and replaced it with 2.23. Alright, I think that's clean enough. So now we can run better cap. Let's run it on my interface right here and we're actually going to run help. And if you run help right here, you're going to see a lot of things. Now the first thing you're going to do is caplets.update. And what this will do is it's actually going to update all the caplets, uh, including the HSTS hijack. So you actually need to do this. And then caplets no, show in order to show all the caplets. Now we don't care about any of these right now. All we care about is the HSTS hijack. So what HSTS hijack does is pretty complicated, but uh, all in all, let's just say that you're visiting a website, let's say facebook.com. And you don't want it to be facebook.com, you want it to be HTTP. And since redirecting this to HTTP is pretty hard because they have HSTS enabled, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the request. If I request to Facebook again, and I go up to the top right here, and you can actually see strict transfer security right here. So this means that they have HSTS set up. You can also check this on this website, hstspreload.org, and if you put the facebook.com right here, it will say that it's currently preloaded. Now what does this mean? Well, it basically means that uh, every connection from HTTP to HTTPS for Facebook will be made sure to go over HTTPS, uh, long story short. So if you take another look at this request that we sent to Facebook, you can notice right here that there's some time right here. Now this age is pretty long right here. Why? Well, because uh, hackers have actually tried to exploit the age by changing the time and then making sure that they get HTTP on Facebook uh, by changing the time, you know? So basically HSTS forces the HTTPS connections. So now some websites obviously have like Facebook, Instagram, Google, they have well set up HTTPS and it will be really difficult for you to actually get to HTTP version of Facebook, but there are ways, right? So, but obviously for some websites, you're going to be able to completely strip HTTPS to HTTP because HSTS is not set up well or because their SSL is not set up well at all and it only uses it on certain parts of the website or stuff like that. Now we're not going to get deep into that because I'm not a professional on SSL connections and stuff like that. Uh, however, I do understand this and I'm going to show you this. So the first thing we're going to do is let's do help. I'm going to demonstrate you how to get Facebook on HTTP. It's a really rare occasion. And I'm going to show you why, but it's going to work. All right, so on the help menu, the first thing that we want to do, and you need to do this in this order because later, if you change it, it will not apply until the restart. So basically just make sure that you do this before. So let's take a look at our HTTP proxy. It will be turned on when we use HSTS hijack. So what we will do is before we turn it on, we're going to to set HTTP proxy SSL strip to true. And now we're ready to run HSTS hijack. And once we run HSTS hijack, it will target sites like google.com and it will replace it with google.corn or stuff like that. It will take into consideration every scenario right here. So www.google.com or something like that, or for example, mail.google.com, it will take those into consideration as well. And it will switch them to .corn as well as it will change from www to something else like www or wvvw or stuff like that. So anyways, let's get into this. So as you can see right here, we're already getting some traffic, but this is basically nothing. This is just just DNS spoof doing its thing. Let's do another help. And right now we want to run some stuff so we can capture all the network. So let's run that probe just because we wanna. 
it's not absolutely necessary, but why not? And let's run Nesniff. And let's do ARP spoof. Now, once you do ARP spoof, it's going to start the whole thing. It's going to start capturing the traffic over the network and stuff like that to make sure that no one that you uh, don't want to hack is there. So, um, I mean, obviously don't hack someone that's illegal, but uh, you get what I'm trying to say. So let's ARP spoof on. And once this is done, we actually have everything set up. If we do help, it should look something like this. All right, so let's see if we missed anything. Seems like we haven't, all right. Now let's go on to some websites right here. So obviously if I visit Facebook from uh, like a toolbar or something like that, uh, it will not work, it will still be HTTPS. But if I go to one of the HTTP websites that has an HTTPS link, for example, uh, let's say MIT website, you're browsing the MIT website and you actually wanna click one of these Facebook links. As you can see right here, you're going to notice that HTTPS from Facebook changed to HTTP. Now this is an interesting fact, if I go to another website, uh, which I didn't refresh yet because this one is loaded before I started my battle cap, you will see that it's HTTPS. But if I refresh it and go all the way down, it will be HTTP now. And as you can see, it's not www.facebook, it's www.facebook. So now let's try to click on some of these links. So let's try to click on Facebook, for example. And if I click on Facebook, as you can see, sometimes it doesn't, it just doesn't work. It will load Facebook in HTTPS still. And if I load one of the websites, so let's say facebook.com, and as you can see right here, when I clicked on the HTTP website, there was an HTTP link to Facebook and not HTTPS. This is what SSL Strip did. And then we go to Facebook, and it usually shouldn't look like this. I guess it didn't load well. If I try to F5, I don't know if it's going to load the real Facebook, or it's just going to load it to look better. Anyways, if I try to log in right here, uh, I don't know why it didn't load the CSS. So let's just say admin at something. Dot com and then password is going to be I don't know password one two three and press login and uh, now we don't need to memorize the password but if I take a look right here and I go a little bit up and as you can see right here we actually have the login and the password for Facebook so it did work it, let's try to click it again everything seems fine uh, yep HTTP Let's try to click on Facebook, and as you can see right here, it's already www. So that's a good thing. If I click right here, it's HTTPS. Now this is an interesting thing. As you can see, it's HTTPS, and I actually it was actually www. So it all depends on a lot of factors, and it will not work in a lot of scenarios. It depends on the browser of the victim. It depends on the uh, you know how good the HSTS is set up on the website and stuff like that. So a little bit of a problem there. It might work, might not work. Let's take the same website and go to another browser. All right, so another browser right here. Let's actually visit the same link, and if I visit it right here, you can actually see. That it's HTTP. If I go to HTTP website, will it work? It seems to work. Okay, so there we go. So as you can notice on the last browser, which was Mozilla, it didn't work. But on uh, Vivaldi, it actually did work. And you can actually type in some creds right here. So one thing you have to notice right now is we didn't redirect it to .corn. So I think in action right here, there was only SSL strip in action. Seems to be still loading and we got this. So let's take a look. It didn't load the website, but I think the request should be sent. All right, so the request wasn't sent. As you can see, there is some post request right here, but uh, all the parameters are not here. So that's a bit of a problem. As you can see, it's trying to redirect and stuff like that. It's trying to send some requests to Facebook. And even though it's HTTP, it's not gonna capture it. So this is why it's problematic. And there we go. Okay, so this one will actually work because we got the situation under control. So we actually have HSTS hijack on work, HTTP a connection, and we have the login of PHP. So if I enter something right here, uh, let's whatever, and at gmail.com and some password, press enter. And if I go back right here, you will see a mad amount of requests. And what we want to take a look at is this one right here. So there we go. 
So this is the password and the login. So that's basically it. As I said, it's not the most reliable thing. Sometimes it will work. So what I suggest is just running HSTS hijack and SSL strip for HTTP proxy. Sometimes you won't load the page for you. Sometimes you will load an HTTPS page, but maybe you can hope to capture some HTTP traffic. Uh, we don't have much better solution. We have the HTTPS proxy, which should make sure that uh, we should make a, like a fake certificate and stuff like that, which doesn't really work. Injecting the certificate and stuff like that should work, but it doesn't really work great. I don't think there's any better solutions for this at this moment. Maybe there will be at some point in the future, but right now I don't know anything. So that's basically it I wanted to show you for today. If you have any questions or want to know more, let me know in the comments. I didn't show everything. There's a lot of things that you need to un understand in order to capture the traffic the way you want to. So basically that's it, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.